I am Guernsey Honore. I'm an actor, writer, and columnist with Authority Magazine. And today I have the pleasure of welcoming the amazing filmmaker and writer, Miss Rachel Thomas. Rachel, would you like to introduce yourself to our audience, please? Yes, thank you so much for having me first. Um, I'm Rachel Thomas Medwid. I can go just by Thomas as well. Uh, but I am a screenwriter, director, um, and independent filmmaker based um, out of New England. Yes, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, I would like to start by asking you if you would like to share with us the story of what brought you to this specific career path. Sure. Um, you know, I was always into writing, you know, uh, growing up and, and funnily enough, I actually made films as a child and teenager, like pretty bad horror films and, but, and made my friends, you know, covered in blood and ketchup that was supposed to be blood. And I never put, and I went on to, uh, you know, be an English major in college. And I had an honors project, which was a collection of short stories, uh, original short stories that I wrote. And, and went on to be an editor of a magazine, which I still currently am. Um, but the, the filmmaking part was funny because I've always done it. And even as an adult, I've made my friends do it. And it, it wasn't until very recently that I put the two together <laughs> and I'm trying to do it professionally. Um, and so it's funny that those pieces were there for me and it took me that long, you know, to come to that path. But I, I'm fine with that because I feel like you come to things at the right time in your life that you're supposed to be that's amazing that's amazing <laughs> all right now can you share the funniest or most interesting story that occurred to you in the course of your filmmaking career yeah I have well I have a lot of them um <laughs> but I'll go with like the the first one because it was my first film set as a director um and I just started directing in 2020 so it really wasn't that long ago um and it, it was my film, The Squirrels in the Attic. And I had really like, I, I had put in some live squirrel shots in it. And of course that's impossible when you come down to filming. And I realized very quickly <laughs> the difference between writing something and filming something. So that was, it's a really good lesson too. Um, so I had to ditch, you know, those shots and, and rework them, which was fine. And I figured out how to do it. Um, but then the last day of the shoot, we had done all the exterior shots and uh, we were filming in this camp in my town that I turned into this remote house. And the the driveway to that, uh, to get to the camp was like super long. It's like almost like a mile. So it's more of a road. And then there's the main road and my lead actor, um, Charlie Carr, she, had, she, she came into the camp and she was so upset because um, she had just run over a squirrel um on the road out in the main road and wow. so my producer and I are like uh we're just gonna go check it out and see if, you know and so what we did and it's really gross and I could I, I didn't talk about it when the film was out but we took the squirrel and we reshot the last shot of the movie with <laughs> the deceased squirrel in it and it's like an amazing shot and and I was like I almost want to cry every time I see it and you know this I, we felt all bad for the squirrel but he had sacrificed himself and we said we're gonna make him live on forever and it just really the ending of the movie as well <laughs> so it was not done during film no animals were harmed during filming or on the set it was completely an accident but we decided to take advantage Yes, that squirrel is a hero for sure. Yes, we love them. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Okay, so who would you say are some of the most interesting people you have interacted with? What was it like? Do you have any stories about them? Uh, yeah, so I don't I don't have an, a specific example for this one, but um, when I started going to film, I started going to film festivals um, as a screenwriter before I was a director. And that really opened up this world to me. It was the game changer for me because once I discovered as a screenwriter that um, film festivals had these unproduced cat screenplay categories, most of them do. And I started submitting and getting in. And um, that was amazing because it was like film school for me. I really didn't know much about any of it I was really focused on the writing and I have to tell you that every time I go it's almost festival season I'm really excited I have like five coming up in the next two months 
and um, the people are fascinating, like just so supportive and helpful and people, you know, they're coming in with their own story. We all have this like, you know, passion for what we do, crazy passion. And you have to be a little bit crazy to do this, <laughs> but the, um, the, they're just supportive, wonderful, interesting people. And I just never get tired of it. I love it. I, I, I come home from a festival, like just supercharged up and ready to create more. Mm-hmm. that's amazing yeah that's great <laughs> all right so none of us are able to achieve success without someone some help along the way is there a particular person who you are grateful towards who helped you get to where you are do you have a story about that that you'd like to share yeah there's I mean again there's a lot I, I don't want to say one person here because uh, there's been so many people that you know help and support me in this especially as someone coming into this so like a little bit later in the game so to speak this is not my actual career I have another one it's so I'm sort of like a secondary career and mm-hmm. people have just been amazingly supportive but I do want to like talk about my relationship with um uh, Seapoint Studios who is the production company that I've done most of my films with so far And I think we've been like equally beneficial to each other as we've like continued to do films and we, um, you know, teach each other things. And also, you know, uh, we just have grown together. Um, And so that's been a a wonderful relationship. And unfortunately it's been, it's getting harder for us to work together because of people's schedules. Mm -hmm. So the last film, I, I just saw something in June and they, they weren't able to produce because they were too busy, but the, um, they came and worked on set for me for free because they want to be part of the experience. And it was like, they're amazing. So that's a great relationship. And then, you know, I have this other one that's maybe a little bit not talked about a lot, but the um, film festival uh, programmers, mm-hmm. uh, there's certain ones who have been just amazingly supportive of me, not because they've accepted my film. It's like really after, and it's not just me, it's, it's all the filmmakers and they will, you know, they start uh, groups on Facebook of like alum, you know, so once you've been accepted, then you get to know all these people who weren't even there just that year, but, and, you know, it continues to grow and that those bonds with all of those people, it's just extremely supportive. Like everybody cheerleads each other on, you know, they ask questions and, and a lot of the programmers have been just, I've gone to them for advice, you know, and they've given me great advice and just support which is huge in a business like this so I really appreciate all that that's amazing that's amazing support is very very important like you said it's like it takes enough craziness to even embark. yes yeah. you know <laughs> the support you know. is definitely important <laughs> yes that's nice that's great uh do you have a favorite life lesson quote if you do can you share with us and how do you think it's relevant to your life Yes. So it is. If your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. And I have that. Someone gave me one of those calendars and I have it on my desk in my office in Boston uh, Mm -hmm. that I barely go into anymore because I work (laughs) remotely mostly, but that quote is still there. (laughs) And I I think it's really relevant for my filmmaking career uh, because there's a lot that's scary, especially when you come in not knowing anything and you have to put yourself out there and I've you know constantly had to put myself in situations where I feel very uncomfortable um you know I didn't go to film school I am self-taught as a screenwriter and I feel like that quote just says you know I, I, every time I do something new I, I'm uncomfortable maybe not scared but you know and but the big stuff you know that's scary and I want to do it and so you gotta you gotta take those steps mm-hmm. um each time to get to where you want to go yes yes I love that quote personally so I I get it (laughs) all right now um I'm very interested in diversity in the entertainment industry so can you share three reasons with our readers about why you think it's important to have diversity represented in film and television and how can that potentially affect our culture yes um so um, I am on, I'm on the board of Women in Film, uh, Video New England, um, and our um, motto, 
uh, it's our little short motto. We have a big statement, but like is to like widen the lens. And we, um, you know, our focus is on female filmmakers advancing their careers because females are underrepresented in the business. Um, and, but it's not just females. We really focus on all underrepresented people in the, in the industry. And we, we spend a lot of time doing events and like based around that. And, you know, when people go to see film, I think film is such a great um, medium for this and how important it is to be diverse because people go to see movies to, um, for entertainment, obviously, but like also to, you know, connect and learn. And I think that if, you know, it's important for people to see people they can connect to, whether they look the same or come from the same culture. And, um, did you see the, there was a, um, commercial, I forget it was a commercial or an ad, but the little mermaid, um, the new live action, and they showed all these little girls, um, seeing her, the African-American little mermaid, like for the first time, like, and there it was like pretty priceless because they were amazed. They're like, she looks like me. And they were like, and that was just their reaction. And then also the reaction that, you know, people, there was backlash against it. And I was like, that just shows how much work needs to be done because not against the little girls, but the the little <laughs> mermaid being African American. I was like, that's ridiculous. It's first of all, it's it's mermaids aren't real. And second of all, it's a cartoon. <laughs> it shows just how much work needs to be done in diversity. There's just a little example. Um, and then it's also so it's important for people to see themselves, but also to see people that are different than them, because you know, that just increases respect and you know, differences should be um celebrated. And I think, you know, just film being the visual medium it is, it's so important to do that. So when I'm um, casting and um, hiring crew, it is really like on the top for me. Like that's one of the main things, you know, there's talent, there's skills, but that's always a big high on my list. Um, New England is not a huge community. So um, I it's great. It's a great um, film community, but it's not New York or LA. And, um, you know, so sometimes I've been a little bit limited that way, but I think you keep focusing on it. And I've like each film, I've been able to do more and um, yeah, it's just so important. And it's, it's a great way to do that. Yes, I, I, I completely agree. It is very important. And I did hear about some of the backlash too with The Little Mermaid which I also don't understand why it's a thing. I feel like anybody should be able to play it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she looked amazing. I haven't seen it yet, but I mean, yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> yes. yeah, I haven't seen it either and I plan on seeing it, but definitely I heard it was like a whole thing. And yeah, I yeah. agree with you. It shouldn't be a thing. <laughs> it should not be a thing. Thank yeah. you for that. Um, now, would you like to tell us what are some of the most interesting or exciting projects you are currently working on? Yes, I have a lot going on. Um, so I just, I'm in uh, post-production for my film, Fenwick. Um, so that's in the editing phase. We're working on that. And then um, the, I also have another film out called, and Penny, uh, another, <laughs> I think I have too much out right now. <laughs> it's hard to be honest. And I have, I have a couple uh, feature screenplays that I just finished. So I'm trying to get some attention on. Uh, but for what's next um, in terms of, creating along with I'm doing a lot of writing right now but um I have one screenplay called on the last day and it's a short screenplay and it, it got it it was has done very well as a short it was like um do you know what the red list is it's cover flies red list it's a screenwriting um platform and it was in the it was on the red list so it was in the top 1% of over 8,000 scripts, like in terms of like ranking as staff. So I feel like there's, and I'm not saying that to brag, I'm saying that because I, I feel like people are reacting to it and it should be made. <laughs> so <laughs> since then I have written the feature from the short and I've never done that. It was very challenging to do. Um, so it's, it's recently finished. So I haven't gotten any feedback on it and I'm looking forward to some feedback. So I'm either gonna, um, depending on funding and all that, either make the short as the proof of concept or possibly wait and make the feature, which would be my first. And it's a, a step I've been told I really need to take soon. It's just a lack of time really um, more than anything because it's my actual job. 
Um, and then one more thing that I, got, I, I need to give a little plug. Um, one of my films, um, In the Company of Crows, it was just accepted into Hayden Films uh, 5.0 Film Festival, which is um, an online festival where they ch they chose only 50 films and they're online for uh, 60 days and it's audience uh, voted the first part. So that's why I'm giving a little plug because I would love people to go on there and watch. It's only like $1.99 for seven days access to the 50 films. And I'm sure you'd see a lot of great cinema, but the top four go on to LA and a very significant prize that would be a budget for me. I never crowdfund. So um, this would allow me to make another film. <laughs> so that's exciting. That's amazing. Well, congratulations. I mean, you've shared so much with me. I'm like, okay. I know. Sorry. <laughs> even a lot. <laughs> that's how I feel. I'm like, oh my gosh. I gotta. No, that's really amazing. Can you please tell us again what the platform is where we could watch the movie with the. Yeah, it's called Hated Films. H-A-Y-D-E-N Films. H -A -Y -D -E -N films. 5.0 it's felt like the Hayden Films Institute like you can you can find it online fairly easily um and it's an easy process to watch and like rate the films you just have to rate at least five for it to count okay. um, and yeah, yeah and my film that. on there is in the company of crows so um okay. and that one I made <laughs> deep in the recesses of COVID it was July 2020 so you can't oh. tell by watching the film, but it was a it was a process. Yes, yes, definitely. Oh, that's amazing. Thank that's you. Amazing. <laughs> All right. So which aspect of your work would you say makes you the most proud? And can you tell us why? Yeah, I think it's um, you know, my um ability to uh maintain my voice as a storyteller and and not necessarily um and this is sort of related to one of the other questions but uh, my artistic vision I I think I'm pretty good at that and sometimes it um it's against what I think an audience is going to want I don't think about the audience I think about the story that I want to tell and um I don't give in to those kind of pressures um and and it um it got rejected a lot a ton but i was very solid that it um was the best film we had made to date and it's a little less accessible and that's why but i i, I i'm proud of my ability to take that risk mm -hmm. and so even though it's been you know rejected more than my other films you know it's it's screened at 15 festivals so far it's got 15 nominations five wins and four placements, you know, so you have to take that all into account. And there was, and awards are fantastic. They're, um, you know, they're motivating more than anything. Cause they're, you know, people like different things. So you have to keep that in perspective as well. Um, but I got some reviews from Penny that finally made, um, me, I was like, okay, these, these people get it. And it was so gratifying. So I just want to read a, a, one line or two lines from it. I won't read the whole thing, but this is why I am happy that I'm able to maintain that at times. So it says, rarely has a short been so layered and baffling, bafflingly captivating as Rachel Thomas Medwood's Penny, which touches on everything from the bizarrely surreal to the grounded traumas of experiencing and dealing with mental illness. There's death, an ominous looking pan that carries the weight of the past and trickling drops of blood that threaten to destroy Penny's fragile sense of reality. There are many ways to unwrap this expertly made nuanced portrait of hauntings and trauma, which lends to its rich complexity and truly terrifying vignettes. So some people might not like to be called bafflingly captivating, but I am so excited. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's great. That's great. It's 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 uh I think it's a uh, very um commendable and just like nice to kind of have like be able to keep your uniqueness, you know, how you say you have that vision and you wanna see it come to light. So you know Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it can it can be hard when you see like, you know, you see crowd pleasing and I but and again, you, you love it when people, an audience will respond to something um, yeah. and there's nothing wrong. That's great. Uh, but also I just, I, I'm just not that person. So I, I don't, I resist that, um, 
you know, that urge to do that. Mm -hmm. right and we don't want all our content to look the same anyway so exactly <laughs> yeah. to bring something different to the table Again, yes di celebrate the differences yes that's amazing diversity right exactly <laughs> yeah. all right that's that's great so now here is the main question of this interview what yes. are five things you wish someone told you when you first started and why okay uh, the first one is um, how intense filmmaking is. Um, so the, you know, writing is, you know, very solitary and filmmaking is the complete opposite. <laughs> so it's like, for me, it's a swing back and forth, you know, what, whatever phase um, that I'm in. Um, it's like, especially on set, like, but like pre-production, like you, you, it's so much of you. Right. So pre-production, especially production when you're on set, it's it's very intense. And um, I love it, though. I mean, even if somebody told me that I'd be I'd be all in. It's just I usually need a little bit of recovery uh, for that. Um, so we ju we just filmed in this um, uh, in June. Uh, Fenwick is the name of the film. And it's um, it was filmed in this manner that turned out to be haunted. So that's a whole nother story. But again, we were getting like no sleep already because that's, it's, I can never turn my brain off like when I'm on set, you know, because there's just so much. Um, but also like the day we were going to set, my director of photography had to drop out from a family emergency and I felt terrible. But can you imagine, like I see your face. <laughs> and so, so I, um, me and my producer, we, we kept our cool, um, and we found somebody within an hour who thankfully was available and he had, he had been vying for the job initially. So he had read the script. Um, and thankfully he wasn't mad that I didn't hire him the first time. And cause I wanted to work with a female. So my first DP was a female and, um, and yeah, so it's it was a really unfortunate she wasn't able to, but can you imagine the amount of, it, it just made it very intense and the amount of um, shifting that I had to do mentally the whole time because we had, now we had a different camera, we had different lenses, you know, I had to like make these very quick decisions the whole time about what I was going to let go and I had to let go of a lot, mm -hmm. but it is what it is and I'm still super happy with it. And so, you know, you have to be very flexible with, <laughs> with the intensity. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That, that, that was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's my first, let's see. Oh, I know. So my second is the importance of networking and, you know, this, I was pretty unaware of at the beginning um, and not even um, just networking, but how you go about it. Mm -hmm. And um, like, so when my first film, the squirrels in the attic was um, just finished, right when COVID, like everything locked down. So I had like my first film, it was such a bummer, but like I put was able to put it in perspective. And I do feel like the good uh, that came out of it was that I was forced to network online, which is less intimidating than in person. Um, and I, I think I got better at it, but I also, I learned that like you going into networking of not saying like, not trying to, think about what these people are going to do for you, but just listening to the other people and what they do and what they can teach you because it's so much. And then it's so less intimidating and it's just more beneficial to everybody. So I think it's your approach on networking and it's more fun. I mean, <laughs> when you're not, not going in and be like, what am I going to get done? How am I, you know, what's this person going to do for me? That's just like a terrible way to network. So, um, you know, just going in with a really natural approach and, and, it just makes it less intimidating for people. So that's my number two. Um, and number three is you're going to make mistakes uh, and do it every time you make a film. And I think the goal is just not, my goal anyway, is not to make the same mistake that I made the last one. And I, I just, it's like, that's the nature of the film business. And, you know, I'm sure that just never ends because you're, every project is new. You're working with different people. Um, you know, so, um, yeah, but don't be afraid to ask questions because again, I came in, um, didn't have no education in this and I didn't know anything. And if I was afraid to ask questions for fear of looking stupid, 
I would not have gotten anywhere. And a lot of times I was like, I don't care. I'm going to have to. <laughs> and it's not looking stupid. Like, you know, you it's, it's looking stupid if you don't ask the questions and then do the wrong thing, right? <laughs> so that's, was that three? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So four was that, um, I feel like there, there's got to be like some sort of sacrifice, so to speak, if you want to continue to, um, you know, get to the next level. And for me, because I have a full-time job, it's really like a lack of time. So whether it's like a lack of time or money or like, you know, that you, you have to make choices sometimes, which I have to do, like not doing something so that I can write or, you know, not going somewhere so that I can have some funds to make my next film, you know? Um, but again, there, I can't believe like what I've done in the past three years. It's like, I look back and I was like, how did I actually do that? Like I've, I've directed five short films. I've written a multiple of new short screenplays and two features. Um, yeah. And it's like baffling to me, but it, but it's because I have made those choices at certain points, you know, and, but they don't feel like sacrifices, which is what, you know, if you love it, it doesn't feel like that. It's just about making decisions. Um, and then what was my last one? What did I say? Was that five? Oh, no. That was four. <laughs> there we go. Um, this sort of like one of my other answers, but the importance of um, maintaining your vision, but being able to collaborate. And because filmmaking is extremely collaborative. And um, my example for this is that, um, so my, well, this is the film I didn't mention too, that's just coming out, it's called Influence. And my um, screenplay was the grand prize winner of the emerging screenwriters, uh, Shoot Your Short. And it was back in 2020, it just got delayed because of COVID and I, you know other things. So it's coming out now and I'm so excited, but it was a very collaborative project, but I wasn't the director. And that was the first time I had been on a set where I wasn't directing my work. And I love the director I work with, Nate. He was amazing. Uh, and the whole team was amazing. So it was a really great experience. Um, but, you know, if I wasn't able to collaborate, that that would be a problem. Um, and every film set that I'm on, but I think Nate had said, I, I was trying to find his email, but he said something like, you know, you have this ability that's kind of rare that you, you're very strong about this, your conviction about the story you want to tell and how you want to tell it. But you're very good at collaborating. And he's like, they don't always go together. <laughs> so I, can't, I couldn't find his real words. I got to go back and find that because it was really nice. It was really nice. I was like, oh, thank you. Um, you know, and, and I do have people who once they work with me, want to work with me again. So I think that's a good sign. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, but I mean, it's really necessary in this business, you know, I mean, it's just, there's all these people working together with different ideas, you know, coming in with different backgrounds and, you know, it's just you have to be able to and, and, and enjoy it while you're doing it. Cause it's really fun. That artistic process. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Yes. Everything you said, like, especially the networking, being genuine and stuff, very important. Collaborating is very important. It's like a type of vision with know how to collaborate. I love that. Thank you so much. You are a person of great influence. So if you could start a movement that would bring the most good to the most amount of people, why would it be? And you never know what idea that could trigger. <laughs> yeah, I would I think like bring back um respect. There seems to be a lack of it and like kind of everywhere. Um, and I think I'll, you know, a lot of it's because of, you know, social media or just online um stuff, because it's easier for people to be rude to each other. But like, I really can't believe some stuff. I try not to look too much, but like the, uh, some filmmaking forums, um, not the film festival ones, but like just like New England film or like the groups on on Facebook or whatever, social media. Like if someone asks a question, like, and people jump on and are so rude to that person. And I'm like, why are you doing that? They're asking a question. Like, even if it's an amateur question, it does is it that hard to be kind and answer the question? No, it's not. And then it starts this fights between people, and I was like, oh, I'm I'm out. But like, and I never contribute, but I see it, and I hate it. It's awful. And then also some of the the film festival, um, the programmers they they get abused by people who don't get into a festival, mm -hmm. and I think that's insane. Like no matter how like 
good your film is or good you think it is, it's going to get rejected. <laughs> it's just, that's part of the business too. And like to abuse the the programmers, I mean, that's ridiculous. So I really think if just everybody thought about respecting someone before they answer or jump at people that everything would be better. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. I do think that's very, very important. So thank you for that. We are very blessed that some of the biggest names in business, VC funding, sports, and entertainment read this column. If there is a person in the world or in the U.S. whom you would have to, who you would love to have a private breakfast or lunch with, who would it be? You never know. They may just be seeing this. <laughs> That would be cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, this is a uh, really hard because there's so many people I want to meet, right? Um, so I I kind of landed on uh, the actor Brian Cranston because, and I, it, hopefully that could be like a package deal with Aaron Paul <laughs> because, <laughs> because Breaking Bad is uh, my favorite show, I think, still. Um, I haven't found something that has quite gripped me as much. And it's really because of the writing and the writing is just, um, incredible. And so I would love to, that, and he also seems like a super interesting guy. Um, and so I, I would love to hear his, their process of taking that writing and their process of the characters through the whole narrative of the show, because it's so well done and um you know they were just amazing um and I as a director I'm still learning how to act with that how to act I cannot act how to uh, work <laughs> with actors <laughs> and um you know it's a process every time and um, I love hearing from other directors and actors and, and also watching you know other directors work um, and everybody has a different process and it's different with each actor but it'd be really great to sit down with like you know professionals who from my favorite show and hear didn't even hear behind the scenes stories that would be amazing so that's my choice okay <laughs> great thank you now, our last question is, how can our readers further follow you online? Sure. Um, my website is rachelspoonerthomas.com. And you can read more about my screenplay, my films, and um, just what's happening. I try to keep it updated. I probably have to update now. But my Instagram is at Thomas. That's probably the best. Uh, Facebook is Rachel Thomas. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, this was very meaningful. Thank you so, so much. We wish you continued success. And again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your great insights. This was an absolute pleasure. And I do look forward to, connect, to connecting with you again soon. Yes. Thank you so much. I look forward to that as well. Thank you. Have a great one. <laughs> you too. Okay.